everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in with middle school team 4613P. Marker Pinkbacks coming in out of Australia. Uh, this team, really cool strategies that they're bringing in here. One of the few middle school teams that is doing a lot in regards to de-scoring. Can we talk more about that? And actually stealing as well, too, from other robots, which I think is really cool. So a lot of great things we're talking about on 4613P, from odometry pods uh, to some of their processes they've gone through. Let's dive more into this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Hi, I'm Emma. When we started building our robot, we wanted to find a fast and efficient way to get around the field. So with the drivetrain, we decided with a six blue motor drivetrain with the motors going straight to the mo to the wheels. So it's kind of like a one to one gear ratio. Uh, it runs with 66 watts at 600 RPM and it makes it easier to get to the tribals faster and quicker than the other robots. We also have these gears on the side of each corner that help us round on the edges of the field just in case the driving is a little bit inaccurate. Um, it just helps us drive a little bit easier on the little turns uh, at the barriers. And we found that it wasn't really stable and it was pushing the drive chain in. So we decided to uh, add a standoff to kind of help like take it, like take the pressure off the drive chain. When did you add the wall riders onto your robot? Was that something for championships here or did, was it added prior? Well, we added that after nationals because we found that uh, driving without them would like Sometimes it was a little bit hard because we'll just bash into the wall and we have to redirect. But with these, we can just roll off the walls. Very cool. Next up, we're going to be talking about uh, odometry and some of the programming that goes into robots. So let's hear more about what's gone into it. So uh, like many other teams that are competing at, that, uh, at Worlds, we found that we needed to make our autonomous very accurate so it would stay consistent during um, all the different matches. So we used the 22 metal gear here with um, a rotational sensor as as an odometry pod. This odometry pod allows us to tune um, PID and make our autonomous work better because it is able to consistently like manage the amount of distances we go and stay consistent every match. Yeah. I, I think you're the first team I've talked to that's actually using like a gear for their odometry as well too. Yeah. When you were testing like the different ones, I know you want to go small, but yeah. were there any complications in regards to like trying to use a gear in regards to getting your feedback at all? Well, um, using a gear and um, was kind of hard because we had to like obviously fit it in and we couldn't really find any other sizes of things that could fit in and other things that was like, because our robot has limited space in our drive term, we had to find something really small. Uh, well, I think one of the key highlights of this robot is your intake on it. There's so many cool things that we're gonna be diving into your intake on it. So tell me more about as we pass over uh, what your intake structure is, and then we're gonna be getting into a couple other great features that your intake also has. Okay, so yeah, for the intake, we decided to make a really long intake, but it was also like really short. So um, this is to make sure that some other robots intakes that we saw from robot reveals, they had really high intakes and we wanted to be able to steal the tribals from other people's intakes. So in order to do that, we had to make a lower intake and this can now um, ram into other people's intakes and steal the tribal away from their intake. Um, so this, this part of this, um, because it's also low, it's harder for it to go over the bar when over the goal bar when it's scoring. So in this case, we made polycarb ramps, which just ram up and then it will boot the intake up and the tribal is able to go in. And the last thing about having the intake as really long is that it is out of size when it starts. So we have a string here, which um, at the beginning, the intake will start off like this with the string tied up. And then um, 
when we start, we will open the wing and the string goes out and the intake will fall down. One thing I'm going to ask you uh, on this, Chloe, is looking at that descoring strategy, was that something that is implemented here for Vex Worlds? Did you, were you doing that at Nationals at all? Because we're starting to see that really kind of become the meta of this game of uh, descoring, both underneath, uh, you know, the goals, but also I love hearing that you're actually potentially taking away tribals from other robots. Oh yeah, so taking away tribals from other robots, um, we started having a look at some matches like before Worlds and we saw that a lot of robots were trying to control the balls on the field and we wanted to be able to control the balls on the field as well so in order to do that we had to find a lower intake and taking it from other um, people, the tribals, yeah. Jack, we mentioned a little bit about that intake shifter but can we uh, dive a little bit more into how that works and demonstrate it as well too? Uh, um, hi, I'm Jackie. Since our robot is goals, uh, we have this um, intake, sh intake shifter which goes up and down with, with the pneumatics. So that's like the um, this, uh, the default position of the robot and as you go down it goes so we can stay under the goal and it goes back up as we get out of the goal so we can like normally intake and outtake. Yeah so this um this is pretty useful in the match as it's important you can like make big changes in the scores and like maybe like it's a threat as well so yeah. Last thing I want to ask you, and I don't know who wants to cover this one here, but I noticed on your screen there's some selection options on this as well too that you can go through. Can somebody cover a little bit about uh, what is on the screen and how you do the different selections? Okay, right, so um, when you start a code, you have like three options for autonomous. So we have offensive, defensive, and AWP. They're, they're used for different um, positions on the field, so like for different um, starting positions. So yeah, so we can get um, so you can be more flexible and stuff. You get more choices. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, Barker Pingbacks overall, there's a lot of great things that I think teams can take from this and learn. I really like your strategy overall, so I can't wait to see it play out throughout the rest of Vextrals here. So good luck in your division and beyond. We can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot for telling us more about your robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.